I get so many questions about which Sims packs are best or which ones I think are worth buying. So I've been trying to make some videos ranking the Sims packs, at least from my perspective, just to kind of give you some insight on which ones I think are good and which ones are kind of most worth the money. I ranked all of the kits, we ranked all of the expansion packs, and now today I want to talk about all of the game packs for The Sims 4. On The Sims official website, they describe game packs as medium-sized packs that add new experiences to play in thematic ways. The game packs are kind of like mini expansion packs, they're $20, so they're half the price, and they usually have a very specific theme and a really big new gameplay feature, so think things like werewolves or vampires. Those packs have an entire new occult type and a new world in them, or things like dine out maybe that add the whole new restaurant system, and then obviously a bunch of like build and clothing items to go alongside those things. I honestly have a lot of good things to say about pretty much all of the game packs. I feel like they're generally pretty worth the money, especially compared to kits. Most of the game packs are 30% off right now, so they're like $14. So for basically the price of a couple kits, you can get like an entire new world and all of this gameplay stuff. In my opinion, these game packs are like way more worth the money than any of the kits are. Quick disclaimer though, because obviously with anything like this, I'm gonna be talking about my personal opinion and you might have the complete opposite feelings about something. So for example, I don't really love playing with occult sims, so I probably wouldn't rank like vampires very highly, but you might love that pack. That could be your favorite one. I don't mean to like insult anybody by hating on their favorite pack. I just want to talk about which ones are the most worthwhile for me personally. And so with that being said, I've got a little tier list here for us. At the very top, I've got must have. So the packs that I like absolutely 100% recommend. When I did this for expansion packs, for example, Seasons was way up there, like my top, top, top favorite pack. And then we've got very good, pretty good, meh, and also not for me. So in this bottom not for me category, I'm going to put things that I probably might not buy if I weren't a YouTuber. At this point, I would pretty much buy literally anything The Sims handed to me, if I'm being honest. So I'm trying to channel my inner like 13 year old self with this one and what she would buy. Also, I just opened this game pack menu and I am extremely offended by this pack having a different icon than the rest of them. I know it's like branded or whatever, but the fact that it's different is really, really bothering me. Oh my God, we will we will get to that. But we're gonna start off with Outdoor Retreat, the first ever game pack for The Sims 4. This is the camping pack and it was the first pack to ever introduce vacations into The Sims 4. There's a lot about this pack that I can't tell if I actually really love or if I just love for nostalgic reasons. Like a lot of the clothes are cute, obviously, but I don't know if they're as cute as maybe I think they are, just because when this pack came out, we didn't have a lot of clothes to choose from, so it was a big deal to get more. It does actually have some really nice hairs and a lot of like cute outdoorsy sort of clothing. The build items are all very cabiny and very outdoorsy. There's like camping chairs and log benches and stuff. It also has some cool like log cabin type wallpapers, but overall, I wouldn't really call this like a building pack. The stuff is fine, it's good, but it's not like life changing. This pack does have a new world, but it's a vacation world, so you can't just visit it. You have to like have your Sims come on vacation to get here. It's also not really a huge world. It's got a handful of lots and one community lot. There are cabins you can stay in, but you can also rent a campsite. The world itself is really, really beautiful though, and all the gameplay is like hiking around. You can catch bugs and stuff. There's a new herbalism skill. If you choose to stay here, you can like pitch a tent and have your Sims like grill or cook around the fire pit for dinner. It's honestly a really fun pack, but it's not like a must have. Have, I'm gonna put it at pretty good. In general, a lot of the older packs are like objectively worse than the newest ones. They typically have a little bit less stuff in them. Even when you compare like vampires to werewolves, the werewolves pack has so much more to do. And I think that's just because the vampires pack is older and they've gotten a lot better at it as time has gone by. I feel like that kind of applies here. It's not bad. It's still good, but it, it's just sort of fine. And then we have Spa Day. And this one is interesting because they went back and did a pack refresh for it. The whole theme of this pack is, is is the spa. You can like visit the spa, get your nails done, do yoga, go in the sauna. The nail thing is actually new. We didn't always have that. They went back and added it last year. So that's kind of fun. They went back and like improved the pack to make it more worthwhile. It's got some decent cast stuff, like some general workout type of clothing. I actually use this stuff a lot for my Sims athletic wear. Also, this hair is one of my favorites in the whole game. The build items are also kind of as you would expect. I find a lot of them a little bit hard to use. Like I don't really go for this sort of of build style all that often, but it also has a lot of tile wallpapers and I use the wallpapers a lot, but most of it's just a little bit more modern than my usual build style. This pack doesn't have a new world in it, but it does have a new lot type, the spa. The gameplay is pretty fun, but it's just not something that I find myself using all that often. It's kind of more of a one-off thing where I'm like, oh, my Sims just got married. Should we do like a, a mini honeymoon and go to the spa or something? But truly, I kind of forget it exists most of the time and I don't really go out of my way to use it. It does have a new death though, if 
if your sims are in the sauna for too long, they can die, which is genuinely a very major selling point for me. New deaths and new woohoo spots are always like really big for me. It's kind of my favorite part of any new pack and, and this one is no exception. It doesn't really happen by accident. You kind of have to like force your sim to be in there for too long, but it's possible. The thing is the pack is cute. It's got some cool stuff, but I'd probably still class it as meh. Again, it's just not a thing that I really use all that often. I do like all of the features. I just don't really find myself like actually using them. It's fun to get a massage. The yoga is super cool, but I, I just don't really do it. After that, we got Dine Out. And Dine Out is kind of a controversial one because it is really, really buggy. Like if you have your Sims try to come here to eat a meal at the restaurant, they will be here for like five hours. And sometimes things don't work. Like this one could really, really use an update. It is actually really, really fun though. I love to build restaurants in this game. The build stuff is kind of as you would expect. It's got like some sort of generic restaurant type furniture. It has booth seating and like some cool menu items and some decorations and stuff. Nothing like super, super out of this world amazing. Although this plant is pretty good, but it definitely serves its purpose well. The cast is kind of underwhelming. There's not really a lot of options. It's more just like uniform stuff for the staff. And then also like a couple random kids clothing options. I think I use this skirt the most out of all of these things. Let's just say you probably wouldn't buy this pack for the create a sim. It is really cool to like have your sims come on dates to restaurants or just be able to come out for dinner sometimes. And when you build restaurants, you can set like an entire custom menu and you can like pick any of the food items in the game and build out a whole menu. And this part is like my favorite part of the whole thing. I think it's so fun to like make a customized menu for some reason. I really, really enjoy this. I made this like pumpkin patch restaurant that kind of has like a fall themed menu. I don't know, I, I like this pack. I know she's buggy and I know she's controversial, but I'm gonna put it up at very good. I actually use it all the time. And each time I do, I laugh about how it takes me literally all day to eat out, but it's still fun. Next we have the vampires pack. And I will say that at the time this was like revolutionary. It's only just after comparing it to werewolves that I'm starting to think it's not so good. This one obviously is for vampires. So it's got all kinds of vampire type clothing. It's also got a lot of really good build items. I think this is one of my favorite build packs, if I'm being honest. It's got a lot of like cobwebs and cracks in the wall and things like that that are good for building older, or maybe abandoned homes. So if you're a builder, you'd probably enjoy this pack for that reason. It also has a new world, granted a very small world because it's just five lots and they're all only houses. I do always build here when I'm trying to make like creepy or haunted type things, but I don't really find myself playing here that often. I think it's safe to say that Vlad here is probably one of the most iconic townies in the entire <laughs> Sims 4. So he is also a major selling point. The main thing is the vampires though, and the vampires are really cool because they have this whole skill tree thing. So you can basically level up your vampire and unlock new abilities. So each time you play, it's a little bit different because you might pick different abilities. And there's some cool ones like teleporting as a cloud of mist, turning other sims into vampires, but you also have to take vampire weaknesses. My favorite is this uncontrollable hissing one where they literally just hiss all the time and everybody hates them for it. It's almost impossible to play as a hissing vampire because they make so many enemies from it. So I'm kind of stuck between putting vampires at pretty good or meh because I honestly think it's a pretty good pack. I just personally don't really care for occult sims, but I think I like vampires more than spa day. So I'll put it here in the middle. Next we have my beloved parenthood, which I think is my favorite pack out of all of them. This one adds a bunch of family gameplay and things for kids and teens. There's a new parenting skill. The kids have school projects. They can like make messes and get in trouble. There's also this new like level to responsibility and manners and other things like that that you can teach the kids. And if they're really high or really low, they can gain bonus traits. So say they're like really responsible as a teen and they always do their homework and they do like extra credit and stuff. As an adult, they'll get the responsible trait, which like really benefits them in their adult life. There's also a lot of really fun cast that's great for younger Sims. Some of my favorite items like these pajamas, also these little bear costumes with the fruits came in this. But I think the best part for me is the build items, specifically the kitchen counters and the tile backsplashes are really big for me. I also love this little toy box item, but I find myself using a lot of this furniture to decorate like all the time. And these school projects are really underrated. If you have your Sims do these, they will gain so many skills. This is like the main way that I have kids and teens build their skills. And this like carried me through the 100 baby challenge. It doesn't come with a new world, which does suck, but I feel like this pack affects so much of my daily gameplay. When I think about ranking the packs and which packs are my favorite ones, it really comes down to which ones I use the most. And I really like packs that I don't have to go out of my way to use. So for example, 
example, things like Parenthood or Dine Out really fit into my like everyday Sims gameplay. I play with families a lot, I like going out to eat and stuff like that, but I don't really find myself being a vampire or going on vacation all that often, so these ones rank a little bit lower. I feel like I have to intentionally make an effort to like make a vampire sim to play with that pack, whereas Parenthood kind of just affects the lives of every kid my sims ever have. So I like that one a lot more, and I'm gonna put it all the way up at the top at must have. Next we have Jungle Adventure, and this one I think has a lot of similar points to Outdoor Retreat. It's really similar vibes too, you can go on a vacation to a small vacation world, you can do some collecting and stuff. I will say that I think this one's a little bit better than Outdoor Retreat, but I do use it less. I think I just find myself wanting to do like a casual camping trip more often than I want to like go explore tombs. The pack has a lot of really really nice casts, but it has some of my favorite build items like ever. It's got a lot of really really good landscaping that I use all the time, but these floors and wall tiles are some of my favorites in the entire game. I am obsessed with them. I use these the most out of anything else in here. It also has a new vacation world and this one is really really beautiful, and I think it has a little bit more to do than Outdoor Retreat because it has like a bar and a museum to visit, but also all of these secret areas back here, you see those little question mark pop-ups? Those are all tombs that you can visit, and I won't spoil this too much, but you can like explore and unlock all of those areas, and it's kind of different each time you play, and then through that you can like find and discover artifacts basically. The houses you can stay in are also a little bit fancier than the cabins, but I think generally I would rank this like almost the exact same as Outdoor Retreat. They pretty much serve the exact same purpose, so it kind of comes down to personal preference for which one you'd rather have your Sims vacation in. Although there is a new death type and a woohoo bush in Jungle Adventure, so that might sway your opinion, but I think I like Outdoor Retreat better personally. Oh my god. Okay, so the next three packs are very difficult for me to talk about. These ones are like bottom, bottom tier for me. This to me is like the game pack flop era. I have a lot to say, but let's talk about Strangerville. This is a really weird one, because there's kind of a storyline to it. Basically, the new world of Strangerville is like infected and you can try and save the town. I don't want to spoil it too much, but it is honestly kind of fun to do, and it took me like two or three hours to do the entire thing. The clothing and furniture is really weird in this one. The clothes are okay, there's some really cute stuff here, but the build stuff is really odd. I think The Sims struggles the most when they're trying to fit more than one new style into just one pack, because this pack has like my favorite doors in the entire game. I wish that it had a few more windows, but these doors are like truly top tier, and they're like sort of older, very fancy style doors, but they also tried to fit in like some weird lab stuff. So there's like some sciency things, but there's also some stuff for like a saloon type of bar. So they just kind of have this weird mishmash of items, which works great for the storyline, but when it comes to playing with these things outside of Strangerville, I don't find myself using like any of them except for the doors. Oh my god, and the world is so disappointing because it's huge and it is stunning. Like there's so many lots and the area around them is like truly so beautiful. This has potential to be like one of the best, if not the best worlds out of all of the game packs, but the builds just suck so much. It like genuinely enrages me. There was a period of time when they had these builds coming out in packs that were so bad. I like don't understand how they manage this genuinely. The roofing is kind of weird and the house is literally completely empty. Like look at this hallway, this giant hallway, there is nothing in it. This bedroom literally has nothing in it. There's not a single piece of furniture. It's just really disappointing. It like really takes you out of the immersion of the story. And at this point, console didn't have access to the gallery, so a huge portion of the player base couldn't even like download a new lot to replace this one. I guess I just found it really upsetting that they were shipping builds like this and like making people pay money for lots that like actually sucked. Cause you wanna just jump in and like play The Sims and have this cool immersive experience and the builds really, really take you out of it. It is due to our excessive complaining about stuff like this that they started working with game changers to make better lots in the packs, and it really makes such a huge difference. So here's the thing about Strangerville. I really genuinely enjoyed playing the story. I think the story is really fun and I think you will like it. The problem is, I don't really think that it has a lot of replayability. Like it took me say three hours to do the whole thing, but do I really want to come back and play it again and again and again and again? Probably not. Whereas things like Dine Out, I could have my Sims go out to dinner all the time. Or even vampires, because of the skill tree, each vampire kind of has different traits, so it's different each time you play with it. The Strangerville story is set, it's not gonna change, there's no different outcome.
outcome. The world is weird, the furniture is not that easy to use. I'm I'm gonna put Strangerville all the way down at not for me. I feel like if the world were different and if the lots were better, it would really change my perspective, but I just get so irrationally angry about those houses. I, I can't. And also, again, it's just not as replayable as the others, so it doesn't feel as worth the money to me. And then we have Realm of Magic, which somehow is like even worse. Like the world is even worse than Strangerville. And this one is so disappointing because I feel like this pack had so much potential. The cast is amazing. It's so cool. Being a spellcaster and like being magical is so cool. All of the gameplay is like genuinely really good. The build stuff, I don't love as much and I'll explain why. I think this house is a really good example of a lot of what I don't like about this pack. So specifically, I think the builds were really bad. Like I think they did a bad job with them, which I know sounds mean, but like this house could have been a magical wonderland and instead it just looks weird. It just looks weird. And the problem that I have with the build items and the windows is that they're a little bit too small. I kind of mentioned this earlier with how The Sims really struggles when they try and do too much in a pack. And I feel like all of the best window sets in this game are in the base game, in things like Seasons and Cats and Dogs. And that's because, for example, in Seasons, we got so many windows. There's like a wide variety of a lot of different sizes of really versatile windows. But then in this pack, we got a few windows, but they're sort of hard to use. Like we have some really giant windows and then some really tiny windows and it's kind of hard to mix and match them. I just kind of wish that I had like maybe one more size variant of a kind of plain window like this. Because while the circle windows are really cool, I just find them kind of hard to use anywhere. And because we don't have a lot of variation, I just don't end up using these windows that often. And then when they try and make these giant houses, the windows look really bad on the walls. This window is way too small for this wall. Also, look at the placement of this toilet paper. Why? Why did they do that? Why? <laughs> Why? What you're about to see may shock you, and I, I just want you to brace yourselves, okay? But this is, in my opinion, the worst building in the entire Sims 4. This, my friends, is the magic realm. So they made this really cool magic world. It's floating. Your Sims use these portals to like teleport between the sides. This area could be like the coolest part of the entire Sims 4, but then you come here, you look at all this area around it, and this is the lot that they put on on the world. Why? Why did you do this? There was so much potential. You could have made like the coolest, most magical building. And this is what we got. This makes me so sad. This like, this whole thing genuinely ruins the pack for me. I just, I can't believe that they're like shipping this. And this is like the cool thing that people are paying money to unlock. This is like the whole gameplay too. You come here so that you can use all the magic stuff. And it looks like this. It makes it so hard for me to like this pack. And I want to like the gameplay. I just, feel like they kind of failed us with this. Like I would put it all the way down at not for me, if I'm being honest. I don't know why it makes me so much angrier than vampires did because vampires like was kind of bad too. This one just feels like it's worse. I think I might put it at meh because the gameplay is really fun and like you can download a new lot or whatever, but I just feel like it could have been so good and it's not. It makes me so upset. And the flop era continues because next is the Star Wars pack. This one is, is really quite something. This is a very niche thing. I think that if you don't like Star Wars, you just, you shouldn't buy it. Like, there's no point. If you love Star Wars, you're probably gonna like this. But if you, like, kind of don't care about Star Wars, or if you specifically hate Star Wars, there's just no point in buying this. It's really not for us. This is a pack really made for fans of Star Wars. I think they did this because EA had like the exclusive rights to Star Wars games and their contract was expiring, so they just pushed out a ton of Star Wars games, including for some reason in The Sims. It's kind of a cool idea. I bet the team that worked on it had a lot of fun because I know a lot of people are like really big into Star Wars and the stuff is like genuinely well made. I'm just not really that into Star Wars and I also don't really care about the story gameplay of this. I found it less fun to play than Strangerville, but I do think that it has a little bit more replayability because there's a few different paths that you can take. This one also has a world, but it's a really weird world. It's specifically a vacation world and you can't even build on it. It has three neighborhoods and technically each neighborhood has one lot. So you can build on those lots if you use cheats if you want, but the lots are there and like very specific to the storyline. So you probably 
shouldn't mess with them too much. And it is really well themed and like really well done, but for me as a person who doesn't care about Star Wars that much, it's like kind of whatever. I don't want to spoil too much of the gameplay in case you do want to check it out and buy it, but for me, this one, I, it's, it's really not for me. <laughs> this is probably my least favorite game pack. That might even be my least favorite of all the packs, like out of all of them for the entire Sims 4. And I acknowledge that a lot of you might love Star Wars and probably would really enjoy this, but I think most of you probably would get more for your money out of a different game pack. One that might have more replayability or at least a world that you could like live in or, or come to more often. I don't know. It's just, it's hard to justify the cost of this one for me. But then we go on to Dream Home Decorator and I think Dream Home Decorator is my second favorite game pack out of all of them. The flop era kind of continued with this, but it also didn't. The gameplay was really buggy when it first came out, but all of the clothing and the furniture in this is like game changing. This has some of my favorite casts in the whole game, but more importantly, the build items in this pack are my favorite build things out of the entire Sims 4. This has a huge amount of build mode in it, like an unbelievable amount of build mode in it. There's two kitchen sets, there's like a bajillion beds, there's new customizable sectionals, there's stuff for bathrooms, there's stuff for bedrooms. Like this pack adds new build stuff for every part of your Sims house. I find myself using these things all the time. Like in pretty much every house, I put something from this pack. I don't even really use the gameplay that much. Like I don't find myself playing as a designer all that often, but I use the furniture so often. And for me as a person who loves to build in The Sims, this pack is like way up there with one of my all-time favorites. We talked about things that I use a lot being the packs that I like the most, obviously. And Dream Home Decorator, I really do use all the time. If you're not that into building, you probably wouldn't like this pack like at all because the whole gameplay is like going to people's houses and redecorating them. And you have to like physically go into build mode and do it. So if you don't love build mode, you probably wouldn't get any use out of this pack. But if you do like build mode, the gameplay is pretty fun and the furniture itself is life changing. Again, I use it all the time. Seriously, one of my top packs out of all of them, like the kits, stuff packs and expansion packs included, I really like Dream Home Decorator. One major downside is that it didn't come with a new world, which really sucks. The packs that do have new worlds are definitely like really, really big. It makes a huge difference to have a new place to have your Sims live and visit and stuff. Game packs can be really weird with that though. They're like really hit or miss if they're gonna come with a world or not. The next game pack, the Wedding Stories pack, does have a new world. And that is one of the maybe only really big selling points of it. I don't know, Wedding Stories is a weird one. This pack is really tainted by the fact that it was so buggy when it came out. Um, You know how I mentioned the Sims game pack flop era? The flop era, it, it really did contain all of these. I'm just a little bit biased about Dream Home Decorator because I love the build stuff so much, but like the Wedding Stories pack straight up did not work when it first came out. When I had early access, I tried to film a wedding and the Sims just didn't get married. Like they just wouldn't exchange vows. I was there all day, no wedding. It's gotten a lot better since then. They fixed a lot of those bugs. I don't have like issues having my Sims get married anymore. I think part of the problem is just that this sort of pack doesn't really work in The Sims 4. Like the kind of things they're promising with the gameplay, Sims just don't want to do. The idea of it is really cool because you can plan an entire wedding. You can like pick a wedding cake and pick the guest attire. You can pick different wedding traditions. So you can say that you want to walk down the aisle and you want to have the guest blow bubbles and you want to have a first dance and you want to have a feast and toasts and stuff. But in practice, when you actually try and get the Sims to do those things, as you can probably imagine, half of them just don't listen. They like get distracted by something else and it just doesn't work. So while in theory, this beautiful dream wedding planning thing would be really good in The Sims 4, it just, it just doesn't really work that way. This pack does have some really awesome wedding stuff though. Like it's really nice to have more clothing and there's a really wide variety of it and it's all really pretty. One of the first pieces of custom content that I ever downloaded for The Sims was a wedding dress back in The Sims 3 days because I wanted to have like a real wedding dress so badly. So it's really fun to have more wedding attire. The build stuff kind of has that Sims problem when they try and do too many things at once because they tried to have a lot of like wedding decor, obviously, but they also tried to add some things to build in in the world. 
and I really like them, but there's only a couple windows. And that's the problem. When you only give me like two sizes of window, it's really hard to use them. And they're really good windows. It's just really tough to fit these on houses because I need like one or two more variants of that window to like really properly fill an entire house build. It's just hard to do it with just two. The world is like amazing though. It is enormous. When you look at this compared to like the vampire's world, it's got twice as many lots and the actual open space your sims can explore is so much bigger. I feel like just this little beach part is bigger than the entire open space of the vampire's world. But there's like a beach here. Your sims can swim in this open water. They can swim on the beaches down here. This whole town area, you can walk around. There's a couple stalls you can buy food from. I mean, the open area is genuinely like, like 10 times the size of the vampire's world, plus the extra actual physical lots. I really do like the idea of planning my sims weddings. Like for me, that feels like it would fit right up my alley. I talked about how I loved like making the menus at restaurants the most. So the idea of planning a wedding is kind of fun to me, but I guess it just doesn't work out as well as I want it to. So it makes it just kind of frustrating. And there is a lot that I like. I love baking wedding cakes. There's some really fun animations. Like the dances are really cute. I don't know, It's it's a nice pack. It's fine. It's definitely better now that it's not as broken anymore. But like this wedding pack, when it came out, she caused me so much stress. This one, like it's worse than Stranger Villa and Star Wars were when it first came out. But because the world is so good and I really do like playing in and building in the world, I I'm gonna put it up at pretty good. It isn't like a must have to me and I can't put it at very good because it's just not, but <laughs> it is, it's a decent pack. We've made it to the very last one. The most recent pack was the Werewolves game pack. I'm gonna be honest, this pack like blew me away. I really went into this thinking that I was not going to like it at all. And when this cover art leaked, I was truly terrified of how the wolves were going to look. I was really scared of them being really weird in game. And I just don't really like playing with a cult. We talked about how I didn't really care for vampires or Realm of Magic that much because I just don't really find myself using that kind of thing. And I still don't like really play with werewolves. Now that it's been a couple months, I don't like always have a werewolf in my household, obviously. But the game gameplay of this is really, really good. I think that werewolves have a lot more going on with them than the vampires did. And I think that's just because the pack is newer. Like with vampires, they built that skill tree out for the very first time. So all of that work was in just making the skill tree. But with this pack, they already had the framework for the skill tree. So they got to use a lot of time and effort on like making other things for it because the framework was already made for the skill tree. So for example, in cast, you can like paint on the werewolves just like the cats and dogs can. There's this whole pack system and you can join like rival packs and stuff. All of the cast is really, really cool. There's like kind of a few different sets of casts, like fitting the different packs. The build stuff is also pretty cool. They've got like kind of a rundown sort of vibe to it. The whole world is kind of like abandoned factory vibes almost, but they even added in stuff for kids and toddlers with this one. A lot of times the younger ones get kind of forgotten in packs like this where like obviously toddlers can't actually be a wolf yet. So I'm really glad they still added some things in there for them. The world is called Moonwood Mill. It's not huge. Oh, this is a lot that I built. That's a tiny little pink house. Ignore that. <laughs> it's not huge. It's only got a few lots, but despite it only having a few lots, it feels a lot bigger than the vampire's world because all of the explorable area is way bigger. The vampire's world was kind of just the size of like this square area, basically, maybe even less. But in this one, you can have your Sims walk all the way out here. There's like a fake lot where this like scary guy named Greg lives. You can get all the way to the top of the mountain if you want. So all of this is still playable area, even though there's not actually a lot there. There's also two community lots, which is really nice and makes a huge difference because there's like actually things to do. And this one, the bar, by this point, they had been working with actual simmers to build the lots. So they're like way better than the original lots from like Strangerville and stuff. We have this really cool bar area. There's this awesome bar shell and like some places to sit and stuff, but it also has like a secret bunker in the back and only only werewolves can get through this door. And when you come down, you like go all the way downstairs into this werewolf bunker. This is just way cooler than that lot in Realm of Magic, the weird magic lot. There's story to this. It's obviously it's smaller, but it's really interesting. Like this is just worlds better than the other occult packs that we have. I seriously had like so much more fun playing with it. I still can't put it up at must have because I just don't play with werewolves that much, but I am going to put it up at very good. If you're going to pick one of the occult packs, I think that one is like 
like objectively the best one. But obviously if you prefer like the idea of vampires or spellcasters better, that does kind of play a role in it. But as far as like what actually comes in the pack, I think that one has the most and it's probably like the most worth the money. So here is my finished tier list of all of the Sims 4 game packs. You can kind of use this as like a tier of my recommendations basically. Obviously I've got some personal bias in there, but I tried to sort of explain what's good in each one to hopefully give you an idea of which one might be the best for you. Just because I like Parenthood best does not mean that you're gonna like Parenthood best. You might think Spa Day is the best one and that's totally fine. Obviously you know what would fit into your gameplay better, but hopefully this at least helps to hear me talk about my reasoning. Like I mentioned, I made a video doing this with all of the kits and all of the expansion packs, so if you want to watch those and kind of hear my thoughts on those, I'm gonna link them down below. And if you're new to my channel and you like The Sims, I actually play The Sims most of the time. I don't usually just talk about it, so feel free to subscribe to see some like actual Sims gameplay. And with that being said, I'm gonna cut this video right here, so thank you so much for watching. Have the best rest of your day, and I'm gonna catch you all tomorrow, okay? Bye everybody. If you're watching this when I'm uploading it, the packs are all on sale right now, so you can get a really big discount. Now might be a good time to grab one if you've been thinking about it. Most of the packs are 30% off right now.